it's a it's a good place to raise children and have a nice nice home you know this is your home so you know I, I just the hospitality there you go that's the word that's what I like the difference between Chicago and the South hospitality I love it look at this the most charming little southern town you've ever seen all these older historic buildings that look just like they did in the 1800s very impressive This is how things used to look all over the Deep South. But this place didn't used to look this good just a short time ago. It was a real wreck. They're lucky, because we're in Louisiana. Most of the places here that went off the rails never recovered. That's actually the story of most small towns in America. It just goes to show you that if they can do it in little old Natchitoches, Louisiana, anyone can do it. Cities like this just need somebody to care. That's a plantation. Well, it used to be a plantation. We don't really have those anymore. They were a big deal back in the day though. All that cotton was big money, I tell ya. This whole part of Louisiana was a very wealthy place in the 1800s. But then the Civil War ended all that and much of the South has never really recovered. Pretty cool that a lot of that old history is still around though, huh? So where in the Louisiana are we anyways? Well, we're in Natchitoches. That's how they say it here. It's a Native American word for a type of chestnut tree. We're kind of way out in the middle of Louisiana, surrounded by farms and trees. It's really pretty out here. You may have heard of Natchitoches before. It's been talked about in all the trade magazines for years now. What is it about Natchitoches that draws you in? Narrow roads and brick streets. Walking from here to there. No schedule to follow. Sitting. Laughing. Lingering. This is the oldest permanent settlement in the original Louisiana Purchase. This was originally a French outpost where they traded all their crops. It was a pretty big deal a long time ago. Indigo, tobacco, and of course, cotton were grown all over this region. But by the time 1950 came, they didn't need as many farming hands, so people started leaving. When the 1970s arrived, the businesses started boarding up, and the place looked pretty bad. We know the story. It happens all over the U.S. But in the late 70s, the then mayor was like, we have this historical town, why don't we fix it up and make it into a tourist destination? So they rolled up their sleeves and got to work. Soon, hotels and shops started opening, and then bed and breakfast sprouted up. And now, it's this, a small town of 18,000 people that's a really popular tourist spot. As we'll see, all this fancy can only go so far in this town. You could say, this glam is a distraction from the wealth disparity and high crime. But we'll get to all that later. This is Front Street. It's the main center for all the tourism. They have some little souvenir shops and some antiques and artsy stuff along this road. This main street's won all sorts of awards for the restoration that's taken place here. The architecture is really cool here. It's very European because, well, that's who built the place. This is actually the original French colony for the entire Louisiana territory, if you can believe it. Right here, where I am right now. A million people come here a year to look at all of this. During Christmas, it's really pretty. Here's what that looks like. Back in 2015, USA Today's readers voted this as the best small town in the South.
It's like this all over Natchitoches. So much history. Some of the homes here are so cool, they should be in a movie. Well, they are. This is what they call the Steel Magnolias house. Remember that movie from the 80s? Right here in that house is where they shot a lot of that flick. It's an Airbnb now. It's like $300 a night last I checked. So I called and asked about staying, and the person who talked to me was actually kind of snobby about it. She was like, we don't need any extra publicity. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't look like there was a single person staying there. I think they really did need the publicity because all the other Airbnbs had guests. Just saying. B&Bs are a real thing here. There's more than 40 bed and breakfasts throughout this area. This is where I stayed. It's called the Queen Anne. Super cool place. Let's just see exactly how people lived back in the 1800s. They don't make houses like this anymore, do they? Here's the view from my balcony. It's in a historic part of town where everybody takes care of their yard. The birds seem really happy here. There's history everywhere here. You really feel the energy from all this spooky stuff that's happened here. I showed that plantation already. It's called the Melrose Plantation, and it's now been turned into a museum. They do tours here where they explain the difficult slavery days. It's kind of sad. Nearby is an old schoolhouse. This was actually the first all-black high school in the parish where the children of slaves once learned. But what's it like to actually live here? Well, I'll show you the rundown part of town on the west side of the river soon. But we're going to start over here, on the nicer side. Here's what an average neighborhood looks like in a small, sort of restored Louisiana town. The average home price in Natchitoches is $230,000, and that's very affordable. It's actually been called a very retiree-friendly place, and you can kind of see why. And this is what the fancy part of town looks like. Even everything over here is still really affordable, somewhere close to 350k. I'd imagine a lot of these people are retired because there's not a lot of good jobs here, but I guess there's enough to keep some people busy. Here's the most expensive home in town. They're asking a half million bucks for this place. Nice house with a big yard along the river. Good for you guys. And by the way, if you want to move here and need some guidance or a real estate agent, email me. I can help. We'll be right back. So this is probably a good time to talk about one of my sponsors. Look, I stay up on the news and I keep hearing about this financial crisis that's going to happen. Like Bloomberg and BlackRock and even Wells Fargo are saying we need to change our financial plans. Some are saying the US dollar won't be the world's currency. Other news is saying we're due for a recession. But almost everything you read says something's brewing. One way to have a good backup plan is to invest in gold and silver. A lot of experts say the cost of gold is going to go through the roof soon. Patriot Gold Group is a top-rated gold and silver coin dealer that helps customers invest in physical precious metals. If you think we're going to see a financial crisis, a good alternative is a no-fee-for-life 401k or an IRA that's backed by physical gold and silver. A lot of top experts say gold and silver is going to hit record highs. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. The link to Patriot Gold is in the description. And let them know Nick Johnson sent you. And now back to the show. A chunk of the city's population is college kids. There's 10,000 students that go to little old Northwestern State University. It's a really quiet quaint campus. It's actually pretty nice. I bet there's a lot of kids who like to go to a school this small. It's kind of comforting here. I don't think they're going to stick around after they graduate, though. I mean, driving around, there just aren't very many places for them to live. That's a big stadium for a little town. There's a few bars in town. I know about that. I spent some time at one of them for quite a while. 
They also have a bowling alley and a movie theater and like 10 Mexican restaurants, but that's just about it for fun. I doubt the college kids head down to Main Street and shop for knickknacks. So this is all just great, right? Well, maybe not. A big part of the place looks just like any other small, poor Louisiana town. And the reality of Louisiana really creeps in when you get out there a little bit. Just about half the town's in pretty bad shape. As I looked into the place more, I was like, Natchitoches is super poor and dangerous. Like, the sixth most dangerous city in the state. The violent crime here is almost double the national average, and the property crime is double the national average. One website gives it a big old fat F for crime. I mean, shoot, they had six murders here in 2020. Six in a little town of 18,000 people. That's almost as high a murder rate as New Orleans per capita. And the burglary rate here is three times higher than in New Orleans. I didn't feel threatened here or anything, but wow. And it's super poor here. The average family brings in about 24K a year. One in three people's on welfare, and that's three times higher than the rest of the country. If you want to press your luck, there's some deals to be had on this side of town. Here's the cheapest place in town. This can be yours for $40,000, everyone. I'll tell you what, seeing all this abandoned stuff on the west side of town really does make you appreciate the improved downtown more. Kind of makes you admire the hard work that went into bettering at least part of town. So in order to understand what a small town values, you have to go into the mom and pops. And it's pretty clear what these people are into when you go into the area restaurants. Here's the bathroom. Got a picture of the guy that caught the fish. The other guy that caught the fish. The kid that killed the snake. Damn, that's a big pig. You really start to realize how much they like to kill stuff in Louisiana. In case you can't tell, Louisiana loves to hunt. You don't see this where you live, I bet. They got all the stuffed animals from the crap that local people brought in. They're so proud of their local kills. That one guy that shot the gator, and the famous local buck, and the gar. There's stories for all of them. I bet the person who caught that big fish still talks about it to this day. He might even get free beers bought for him. One night at a place called Mayo's, I ordered the blackened alligator. The owner came out and immediately confirmed my suspicion that folks here know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to game. He told me his gator's so good because he only gets the back straps. That's the tender white meat along the spine that hasn't been toughed up. He said the rest of the gator is dark or greasy or just plain bad to eat. He also told me squirrel tastes like owl. I was like, well, what's owl taste like? But it's like that all over town. Seems like all the local bars and restaurants downtown have some sort of local kill on the walls. Woo wee! But it's not just hunting stuff. There's little shops along Main Street that are the opposite of that.
Natchitoches has the oldest general store in the state of Louisiana. It was built in 1863. It's called Kathy Frederick. They have everything you need if you're into general store stuff. It smells old in here, I'll tell you that. And it sure does sound like the oldest damn general store in Louisiana too. Well, I was out and about in Natchitoches. I did a lot. I was here for a day and a half. As soon as we got to town, we saw this drive through daiquiri place. Have you ever heard of a drive through daiquiri place? Well, it's a thing in Louisiana, let me tell you. You drive in and you order these booze slushies and you don't even have to get out of your car. They bring it right to you. So we would like the smallest one that I can buy. It is a 12 ounce for $3 right now. Sweet. Look at that. Drive through daiquiri. Mm. You're not supposed to drink and drive, but the passenger can. And let me tell you, these things are really good. I couldn't even taste the booze in my strawberry daiquiri. And that is dangerous. So for dinner, I had to get the local fare. Well, maybe. I heard the popular joint in town was a place called T. Johnny's Cantina, which has all you can eat crawfish for 25 bucks. I was like, oh hell nah, I hate crawfish. But I had to try a meat pie. Everyone has to try the meat pie. It's one of the official state foods of Louisiana. Come on, people. I heard the best place for local meat pies is a little joint called Lesnion's. All the famous people go here. Meat pies are really good. They're a pastry stuffed with goop made up of ground beef and pork and onions and taters. I added some local gumbo and some cornbread. Mm 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 mm. It's funny though, right before we left town, I was talking to a woman about how much I like meat pies. She was like, the best meat pies are at the gas stations. So the day after we left Natchitoches, we stopped and I tried one at a rundown gas station about 30 miles north of town. I think she's right. Why don't you like crawfish anymore, Nick? Because, Mappy, that one time in Georgia, I talk about it all the time. You eat gas station food too. Remember the last time we were down here and you ate that gas station hot sauce and just about burned your little paper tongue off? Yeah, that hurt. I didn't just eat my way across the county. I saw some history too, everyone. I checked out the Oakland Plantation, which was built in 1818. It sat on only 42 acres, making it a relatively small plantation back in the day. Natchitoches also has the oldest cemetery in the state of Louisiana. <laughs> so many things here are the oldest in the state. There's graves that go all the way back to the 1700s. I tried to find those, but didn't want to creep around here too much, but I found some graves from the early 1800s. All these headstones and tombs are literally crumbling. I wondered if the families ever visited or if they were even around anymore. And look at the curbs. These are the highest curbs I've ever seen in my life. My God. I guess that's how they made the roads back then, though. So on our last night in town, I sat out on my balcony and I watched a storm roll in. That big cell right there was supposed to hit us, but we got missed. I didn't know it at the time, but that same storm would eventually get massive and it would hit a part of Mississippi that I'd stumble onto a week later. And this whole area is destroyed. It's pretty clear how dangerous springtime is down in the south when you watch a thunderstorm form right above you and then see it turn a town into rubble a hundred miles away. 
As for Natchitoches, this place is just lucky, I guess. The people who live here today are lucky. A generation before them had a vision and turned their town around. I suppose if you live in an old Louisiana town that hasn't been fixed up, you might be kind of jealous of this place. That's a lesson. Just care. It's good to see that there are still places in the country that can be inspirational, because most places in the U.S. do not get better anymore. Like the following stop. The next place I went to is a real downer. There would be no optimism greet me there. No way. As I discover, Shreveport would set the scene for the ups and downs I'd begin to see on this road trip. It was a real revelation about how bad things can get down here in the Deep South. Talk to me about how Natchitoches has changed over time since you have been aware of it. Okay, well, here, I've been here now 25 years this past December, and uh, actually it has did a dramatic change. Um, you can tell the difference between like southern towns when you just got nothing but dirt roads and it's just a blink of an eye you through the town. But the past 20 years, they when I say the streets have grown, they got bigger now uh, since the Hurricane Katrina. That's when everything pretty much just sprouted out. Um, you know, people had places to go, and Natchitoches was one of the places they did come to. So it did give us, generate more people in Natchitoches, and it did bring more jobs, more, you know, it, it brought a lot. And like I say, dramatic change, uh, I'm not going to get with the kids yet. But for the most part, me, I came here to raise my children and when I got down it wasn't nothing you walked it wasn't nobody out walking it was just I ain't gonna say dead because this town here I found out is just pretty much retirement if you take the college out the town it's completely dead but the college and the retirees is really what makes this town whole so for the most part you know it's it, it grew when I say it grew it grew um, a, a lot of department stores, uh, Kaiser is like really big now. We have, oh, I didn't think we would ever get this, uh, the coffee shop, um, uh, Starbucks. We got a star, Nagatish with a Starbucks? Wow. Um, Chick-fil-A is, is, is getting big. Uh, we have a big Chick, Chick-fil-A now and it's pretty much better than the one I know in Alexandria. Um, it has the big drive. When you walk, when you drive through, oh my God, it, like I say, it's, for me, it, it's a change, and it's, it changed for the better, better, but we have our youngins growing up now, so it's, I want to say, you got your bad everywhere. I mean, I, don't matter where you go, you're going to have, you know, some parts where, yeah, this part of the town is bad, but everything else is good. All around Nagatish, you have a few here, a few here, a few here. It's not like, okay, you go to Chicago, you got a whole section, you know, uh, it's bad, and then you don't even want to go in that part. Negative is not really like that. It's certain parts you don't want to go in, but it's only one. But for the most part, you got the city, uh, the police station right there, you got the sheriff right there. So, you know, the square is not really a square. It's part of negative, but people make it the way it is. And we do have a whole lot of good people, 90% good people and maybe 10% bad. So like I say, everywhere you go, you gonna have where, oh, you don't wanna stay here, it's bad. We get that name sometimes, but you know, it's the children. You know, you got our generation, you know, done grew up and you know, some of us, we not, we don't want nobody beating on our kids. We don't want nobody, you know, we used to hear the word a bit of raised kids. Um, I'm still with that. It takes a village. But Nagatish is that village. I don't care who you run into. Um, my husband is a coach um, at Nagatish Junior High, and he's for the kids. So, like I say, once you get that one person that's going to grab a hold of those children, then you'll have the rest of us, you know, enjoying the town. You know, we ain't got to worry about gunshots at night. We ain't got to worry about hearing the, you know, you go hear fire trucks and ambulances everywhere. You have people that dial 911 because they're sick. It's not because something unhappened, you know, or somebody had a wreck or something. That's anywhere. 
But Nagatish, I picked Nagatish because I raised five children here, and it's a, it was a nice place to raise children. Very nice. My kids are grown now, doing good. Like I said, I've been here 25 years. I couldn't pick nowhere else to go but Nagatish. Now, that's just coming from me. You know, I don't know where, if you go somewhere else in Nagatish and speak to someone, but for the most part, this has been the most good experience I've had in life. And 22 years in Chicago, <laughs> ain't gonna compare to this here. She walked down, everybody's so pleasant. Hello, how you doing? How you, you don't even know this person. Like you, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, it's just that type of scenery, nothing else. I didn't know about it until I moved to the South. So you have some towns that's friendly, but then you have some that's, it, I don't care, it could be anybody. Um, that's, oh, I don't want to talk to them, or I don't want, you make the place the way you want to make it. So for me, staying in a small town, it's the way I like it. It's the, it I, I like less noise. Um, believe me, I love the big, um, how should I say, high-rise buildings. You know, I love the water, you know, but they have water here. Um, I love the fishing. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a settle, you know, you just, you comfortable. And for me, it was, it, it was comfortable staying here in a small town and watched it grow, you know, it, it, before my eyes. So just to say for other people moving to a small town, if you just like, you know, less quiet, I mean, you know, less noise, you know, less people, um, more, getting together this is what small town is for me you know we all come together we have you know the christmas festival you know everybody comes together it, 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 from everywhere um we have the mardi gras um uh we have a couple of other things that brings everyone together in negative and they've been doing it for years even before i even got here so uh being in a small country town is, is for me, is the, the best life to have. Never knew nothing about it. I knew about country towns, because like I say, I'm a city girl myself, but I really consider myself country as of now because I've been here now 25 years. So I've been here longer than I've ever been from my home. So uh, that's pretty much the way I feel about country life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a little mellow. It's nice. It's not rushing here, rushing there. You gotta go, you know, it's, it's just mellow. Everything is just nice. For a final question, the difference between Chicago, big city, the values that people have up there versus Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, you, you got your, since I've been down here, I, it's, it's how you doing, sir? You know, the sir and ma'am just takes over the whole thing. It's all about respect, you know? Um, you get that and actually you you hear, you know? you I don't care, you, you kill a person with kindness, you know? It's, it's more about being kind to people and stuff like that and that's what I got from being here, that yes ma'am, no ma'am, you know? How you doing? You don't get that in Chicago. You just walk right on by like you just, like you the dirt or you the ground or you just a car just sitting there. You just walk right on by. Here, they don't do that. They look at you, oh, you, you doing okay today? I, I, everything's fine. And I just love it. I, don't get me wrong, I love it. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting, that's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house, too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home, too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey, guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.